Welcome to Common Prayer Daily, your guided meditation through scripture and prayer. This is a liturgy for the 13th Tuesday after Pentecost. Let's pray. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom now and forever. Amen. Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship Christ among us, our King and our God. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 44 We have heard with our ears, O God. Our forefathers have told us the deeds you did in their days, in the days of old. How with your hand you drove the peoples out and planted our forefathers in the land. How you destroyed nations and made your people flourish. For they did not take the land by their sword, nor did their arm win the victory for them. But your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. You are my king and my God. You command victories for Jacob. Through you we pushed back our adversaries. Through your name we trampled on those who rose up against us. For I do not rely on my bow, and my sword does not give me the victory. Surely you gave us victory over our adversaries, and put those who hate us to shame. Every day we gloried in God, and we will praise your name forever. Nevertheless, you have rejected and humbled us, and do not go forth with our armies. You have made us fall back before our adversary, and our enemies have plundered us. You have made us like sheep to be eaten, and have scattered us among the nations. You are selling your people for a trifle, and are making no profit on the sale of them. You have made us the scorn of our neighbors, a mockery and derision to those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, a laughing stock among the peoples. My humiliation is daily before me, and shame has covered my face. Because of the taunts of the mockers and blasphemers, because of the enemy and avenger, all this has come upon us. Yet we have not forgotten you, nor have we betrayed your covenant. Our heart never turned back, nor did our footsteps stray from your path. Though you thrust us down into a place of misery and covered us over with deep darkness, if we've forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to some strange God, will not God find it out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Indeed, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, O Lord. Why are you sleeping? Arise, do not reject us forever. Why have you hidden your face and forgotten our affliction and oppression? We seek down into the dust. Our body cleaves to the ground. Rise up and help us, and save us for the sake of your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of 2 Corinthians beginning with the 8th chapter, the 16th verse. But thanks be to God, who put into the heart of Titus the same earnest care I have for you. For he not only accepted our appeal, but being himself very earnest, he is going to you of his own accord. With him we are sending the brother who is famous among all the churches for his preaching of the gospel. And not only that, but he has been appointed by the churches to travel with us as we carry out this act of grace that is being ministered by us for the glory of the Lord himself and to show our goodwill. We take this course so that no one should blame us about this generous gift that is being administered by us. 
For we aim at what is honorable, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. And with them we are sending our brother, whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker for your benefit. And as for our brothers, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. So give proof before the churches of your love and of our boasting about you to these men. Now it is superfluous for me to write to you about the ministry for the saints, for I know your readiness, of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. But I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter, so that you may be ready, as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we would be humiliated to say nothing of you, for being so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead to you and arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an exaction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, beginning with the third chapter, the thirteenth verse. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired. And they came to him. And he appointed twelve whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bonerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In God's presence, think through the day ahead, the work you will do, the people you will encounter, the dangers or uncertainties you face, the possibilities for joy and acts of kindness, any particular resolutions you need to renew. Consider what might draw you from the love of God and neighbor, the opportunities you will have to know and serve God and to grow in virtue. Remember those closest to you and all for whom you have agreed to pray. Ask God's blessings, guidance, and strength in all that lies before you. Gather up these thoughts and reflections in the words that our Savior taught us to say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. 
Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, be gracious to us, and bless us, and shine your countenance upon us, and have mercy on us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Father is my hope the Son my refuge, the Holy Spirit my protection, all Holy Trinity, glory to you. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for another prayer. As always, I will encourage you to visit our website, commonprayerdaily.com, where you can access our liturgy and more resources. And if you'd like to support this podcast, and all of its endeavors to grow and to advance the gospel through the good news of Jesus Christ and through liturgies that bring us into prayer, you can do so by visiting patreon.com slash common prayer daily. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. We'll see you next time.